Hey guys, what's up? This is JRP77 from JG and Games, and this is a bit of a different camera angle because this is a bit of a different video. So last week, Brackies made a video on the 10 minute game challenge, and so I really enjoyed the video, I liked watching it, I thought it was a really cool idea, so I decided that for this week's tutorial, we were going to be making a game in 10 minutes, and today, we are going to be trying to make Doodle Jump in 10 minutes. Now first of all, if you haven't seen Bracky's video, it is very impressive. I really enjoyed it and I will leave a link to it in the description below. It's really cool. Today we're going to be trying to make a game in 10 minutes or less. So I got two camera angles set up. I've got this one that you're looking at right now and then when I go over my screen recording, I've got this webcam right here. So we've got a little bit of a variation. So I can switch back, I can be looking at this camera and at this camera. Pretty cool. Also on this main camera, we have this timer right here on this monitor. I did get a second monitor. Uh, I just got it because I was tired of having to work with only one monitor. So I found this bad boy in my closet. Anyhow, you will be able to see the 10 minute counter on here just so that you can tell that it's actually not fake, that I didn't do this in like 20 minutes, uh, but I've just got a counter right here. Already made a project because it takes forever for Unity to make a project. So that doesn't really count as cheating because that just would take like 30 minutes of the time. So without further ado i'm just gonna go over here and i'm going to start the timer so let's go all right so because we're making doodle jump we need to have a character so i'm going to go to game object 3d object sphere and then i'm just going to lower it just a bit and it's pretty centered right now so i'm just going to leave that alone i'm going to create a new 3d object i'm going to create a cube this is going to be our actual block so i'm going to scale this down and just make like a little platform or whatever I'm going to rename this to block and I'm going to drag this down to my assets so that we can use this as a prefab and then we're just going to spawn it as an actual prefab. So then what we need to do is we need to make a player script. So we're going to be doing this with rigid body. So I'm going to go to add component and we're going to create a rigid body or whatever. And we're going to leave all these settings the same except for the fact we're going to freeze the rotation so that it doesn't get wonk whenever we do our camera. And while we're at it, let's just go ahead and position our camera briefly. We're just going to move it up like this. And then we're just going to say that we're going to make this like a bluish. Now we'll make it like a grayish. Yeah, I'll make it a grayish color. We'll set the clear flags to solid color. So that's a gray background. And now that we got this, we can go ahead and begin scripting. So on the sphere, I'm going to click add component. I'm going to create a player uh, script. I'm just going to call it player. And then I'm going to double click to open it in Visual Studio. Visual Studio might take a while to load. Now we've got this, I'm just going to delete everything and I'm going to, oh boy. And we're just going to go down here. Can't waste time. And I'm going to create a new public rigid body play, player p uh and then we need to make a force so i'm going to say public float force and then what we're going to do is we're going to say void on collision enter like that and um, yeah i think i spelled that right and then we're just going to say first of all that we're going to we want it to completely stop the movement so i'm going to say player dot yeah Say player p dot is kinematic is equal to true. And we're going to say below it player p dot is kinematic is equal to false. And then underneath this, we're going to say player p dot ah, dot add force uh, force times vector three dot up like that. I'm just going to hit semicolon like that. And then what we're going to do is we need to have a movement thing. Uh, so that our player can actually move around. So I'm going to create a public float called move speed. And then I'm going to go down a couple of lines. I'm going to say in the void update, we're just going to check to make sure, I'm just going to do this at all times. So I'm going to say uh, float or is, is equal to input dot get axis raw. And I'm going to say horizontal like that. I know Bracky uses a similar method. We're not going to do the exact same thing just because this is easy. I'm going to say transform.translate, not that, translate, and we're going to create a new uh, vector three. And inside of here, we're going to say horiz times move speed times time dot delta time comma zero f comma zero f just like that and then we're going to close that off and now we should be able to move around in our scene and we should also be able to bounce on our block so now in our sphere i'm just going to set drag that in for rigid body i'm going to set the force to about 400 and move speed to 15 no we'll probably set it to like 20 hit play now every time we hit the cube or whatever, we bounce, but now we need to add in some more blocks. So we're gonna right click on this block, we're gonna go add component, and I'm just gonna create a new 
script called block. I'm actually going to call it block spawner. All right, I'm going to double click on this. There we go. For some reason, you can't select in there anymore. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we are just going to create some variables. I'm going to create a public uh, public game object, and we're going to call this block. And then we're going to go down, and I think that's the... Oh, we need to create a reference to our player. So we're going to create a public transform player. And then we're going to go down, and we're going to create a public... We're going to create a void start or whatever, just so that we can run this as soon as we start. And we're going to instantiate um, a block at a new vector three. And we are going to say, uh, for the first one, for the X, we're going to say random dot range. Uh, and we're going to set this to like, I believe our player right now, where's our player at? He's at zero. We'll just say he's at zero. Uh, negative 0.37 so we'll say from negative 10 to 0 so that he has a little bit of room to get around uh, and then we'll just say uh, player dot position dot y uh, plus 3 because we want it to be above him and then we'll say comma 0 f like that and then after that we need to say quaternion dot identity since we're not going to have any rotation whatsoever then what we need to do is we need to create a public i enumerator enumerator and we're going to call this spawn block and then inside of here we just need to make sure we need to make a variable so that this doesn't spawn over and over again so i'm going to create a bool called spawn and then we're going to make sure that spawn is equal to false. So we're going to say if exclamation point spawn. And then inside of here, we're just going to basically copy this line right here. And we're going to paste it right here. But I also want to extend this out to about five, maybe past it. Yeah, we'll say no, we'll say 10 uh, just for now. And then we need to say yield return new wait for seconds. And we'll say 0.1f because we don't want this function being able to be run immediately afterwards. So this is just a, well, a small delay. I can't speak because I'm thinking. We're going to set spawn equal to false after that. We shouldn't have any errors. Uh, we still have some time left, so we might be able to do some polishing after this. Let's just see how this goes. And so we hit the block and we don't actually see anything, but I don't think we've actually assigned anything. So we're gonna go to the block. Yes, we don't have anything assigned. I'm gonna drag the block spawner. We need this to be on an object. So we create an empty object, drag the block spawner onto there. Then on our, actually no, this shouldn't be on the block. It should be on this game object. So we're gonna set the block to this thing and the player to here. And then on our player, uh, we should oh we still have to call this function so uh, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna say down here we're gonna create a reference to our block spawner I'm just gonna call it uh, BS ah, I messed up no 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 BS oh my gosh this is how I'm gonna run out of time no <laughs> no stop Capital S. All right, there we go. And then we're gonna say down here, we're gonna say block spawner dot start Corey team uh, spawn block. And just like that. Now what we should be able to do is go back into here. <coughs> Sorry, we can drag our block spawner into right there. And we've already got our block spawner set up. So now we should be able. There it is. Oh, uh, we've got a slight problem right now. The problem is, is that it's way too high. And I also don't think that we can, for some reason, hit it. So I think what's happening is as it's spawning, it's spawning too far forward. So we need to get this Z. It's out by uh, negative 1.2. So we're just going to move everything back by uh, negative 1.2. So we're going to set this to negative 1.2 and this to negative 1.2 like that. All right, so now it's hopping to Unity. This should bring everything forward. Aha, that's the problem, is that now if it's above the player, we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to check to see um, where the player's position is. Oh, I'm running out of time. We're going to cut this line out. 
and we are going to say if player.position.x is greater than zero, uh, then what we're going to do is we are going to set, we're going to do this, and we're going to set this to uh, negative eight so that he has room, and then we're going to copy this again, and we are going to, no wrong thing, I'm running out of time, and we're down here, we're going to say, uh, else if player position is less than zero, then we are going to set this, if it's greater than zero, no, we want this to be at like one, and we'll say five. Down here, we want this to be like negative one and negative five. Why not? All right, so now we should be able to save this, hop back into Unity. All right, so now, oh boy. All right, so it's kind of working. The last thing we need to do is just assign the main camera to not our block, we need to assign it to our player so that whenever we bounce, then the camera follows us. It's a bit high, so really quickly before we run out of time, we're gonna set this to, ah, to, ah, uh -huh. All right, so we're out of time, but it's just one number. Okay. We're out of time. Let's just test this real quick so that we can look at this. So I technically didn't complete the challenge, but we're gonna say I completed the challenge because I was one number off and I was changing everything. Uh, but let's just see how this looks. Uh, I'm gonna hit play or whatever. I hit the block, I go up. The only problem with this right now is that as you can tell, as we go up, we can't go through the bottom of the block. So you have to land on the top and there is the chance that it spawns above you. If I can get a good run, because this should work well. There we go. And there's no dying. So that's the other thing. But you can you can get stuck. So I mean, it could be a fun gameplay mechanic or whatever, but realistically, it has a lot of bugs. Even though I kind of got a working product decently quickly. You could also kind of ride up the side of them. Or you can just glitch it out completely. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it there. And even though mine had a ton of bugs, it was a ton of fun to just try to make it and see what I could do. And honestly, it was pretty fun. I enjoyed it a lot. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If this video sucked, then you know what to do. But if it didn't, drop a like and don't forget to subscribe for more content. Don't forget to check out our website, social media, and merch, as well as our community Discord server. All of those links will be in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.